Hello, and thanks for using TickBoom, a free service that helps high school students with their math problems. I've had a student send through this interesting proof question. It involves um, a combination of proof and trigonometry. Uh, it's got two parts. Uh, part A says to prove that dn dx to the n, or in other words, the nth derivative of sine ax plus b is equal to a to the power of n times sine ax plus b plus n pi on 2 for all positive integer n, where a and b are constants. And then part b says, hence or otherwise, find the nth derivative of sine squared x cos squared x with respect to x. Now, I think each of these results are um, worth, worth looking at in and of themselves. So what I might do is I'll tackle each of these parts in separate videos. So for this video, I'm going to focus on part a. And even though we're not told to, I think the method of, of induction is what's going to naturally help us here because you can kind of see that we've got this n in there, uh, the nth derivative, and we've got an a to the power of n and an n pi on 2. And the periodic nature of the sine function kind of, at least for me, hints that the kind of approach of induction should be able to help us here. So that's the method I'm going to use here for part A. So to start, I'll just write what we're trying to prove. So we want to prove that the nth derivative or dn dx to the n of sine ax plus b, that nth derivative is a to the power of n times sine ax plus b plus n pi on 2. And this is where n is a positive integer. So if we work through our steps of induction, step 1 will be to um, show that this is true for n is equal to 1. So to do that, um, maybe first I'll note what the right-hand side is. So our right-hand side, when n is equal to 1, would be a times sine of ax plus b plus pi on 2. So that's our right-hand side. Now let's take a look at our left-hand side and see if we can get to the same place. So effectively, the left-hand side will just be the first derivative, so d dx of sine ax plus b. Now that will be equal to, um, we differentiate what's on the inside with respect to x, so that will just be a, and then that gets multiplied by the cos of ax plus b. So we kind of need to somehow get from this cos to the sine, um, and, and somehow there needs to be a pi on 2 in there as well. Now the relationship of um, cos x being sine 90 minus x I think is going to help us, but before we jump to that, I think first we need to make use of the fact that cosine is an even function. So we can actually write this as equal to a times cos of negative ax plus b. And that's because um, basically cos of negative x equals cos of x. It's an even function. And now what we can do is we can say that that is equal to a times the sine of 90, or um, since we're kind of dealing in radians, I'll just write 90 as pi on 2, minus, minus ax plus b, or in other words, plus ax plus b. And that's um, basically using the fact that cos of x is equal to the sine of pi on 2 minus x, or 90 minus x, is how you might remember that. Um, and really all I need to do, I'll just reverse the order of these two to make it exactly clear. So that gives us a times sine of ax plus b plus pi on 2, and that is exactly equal to the right-hand side. So we can conclude that this is true, this relationship is true for n is equal to 1. 
So um, step two of the induction will be to assume true for n is equal to k, some integer k. And so what that effectively means is that we can write dk dx to the k. So the kth derivative of sine ax plus b, we're going to assume that that is equal to a to the power of k times sine of ax plus b plus k pi on 2. So that's step 2. Um, I might turn over for step 3 because I'll need some more space. But step 3 of our induction will be to then um, show that this relationship is true for n is equal to k plus 1. And then from there we can use the process of induction to then conclude that it must be true for all n. So um, here again, I think we can start by looking at the right hand side. So what's that going to be? It's going to be a to the power of k plus 1 times sine ax plus b plus k plus 1 pi on 2. So sine ax plus b plus k plus 1 pi on 2. So that's the right hand side. Now let's take a look at our left hand side. So that is going to be the k plus 1th derivative with respect to x of um, sine ax plus b. Okay, well what's that? I think what's going to be helpful is in terms of linking this up to what we assumed in step two being the case derivative, well what we can do is we can write that as being this, the k plus one derivative is essentially the derivative of the case derivative because what you do is you take the case derivative and you differentiate it again, that's how you get the k plus one derivative. So um, I'll just write that out. So what we can do now is this bit in here we can link to what we've assumed to be true in step two. So what I can say is that that is the same as the derivative of um, a to the k times sine of ax plus b plus k pi on 2. And that's um, from step 2 of our induction. Okay, well now what we can do is we can, we can find the derivative of this with respect to x. So the a to the k will come out the front because that doesn't have x in it. And um, uh, in terms of differentiating this, we use the same technique we did before. Um, the derivative of the inside with respect to x will just be a, so it's going to be times a, and then we write cosine, and then we leave what's inside. Now because we've got a to the k times a, that can become a to the k plus 1, um, which is good because we do have an a to the k plus 1 in our right hand side. And just like we did for step one, we need to convert this cosine into a sine. And I think we can use the same technique as before. So the first thing we'll do is we'll just put a um, negative in front of everything, ax plus b plus k pi on 2. And that's, again, using the fact that cosine's an even function. And then we can use the same technique again of um, linking cosine with sine pi on 2, so cos of x is sine pi on 2 minus x, so pi on 2 minus minus, so plus ax plus b plus k pi on 2, and then this becomes a to the k plus 1 times sine, and um, I'll combine the pi on 2 with the k pi on 2, which is effectively k plus 1 pi on 2. So we'll get ax plus b plus k plus 1 pi on 2. And that 
is exactly our right hand side. All right, so therefore uh, our, our final step of the um, induction process is we can say by induction the nth derivative, so uh, dn dx to the n of sine of ax plus b is equal to, and I'll just make sure I write this properly, a to the n of sine ax plus b plus n pi on 2. Sonic boom! All right, so that's uh, that part A of the question. So this result naturally is going to help us with part B, uh, and we know that because part B starts with the word hence. Um, so I think I think this is a handy result to um, have been able to prove in and of itself. Um, it's interesting to kind of note that the periodic nature of the sine curve results in essentially a, a kind of periodic derivative. Because um, we know in, in its simplest form, when we differentiate sine, we get to cos, when we differentiate cos, we get to negative sine. So we're kind of always jumping back and forth. And because the sine and cos curves are kind of offset by um, pi on two, um, we, we effectively get this, this relationship, which is quite interesting to see. So hopefully that all made sense. Um, if you did find that explanation helpful, please be sure to give it a like. And if you're someone who wants to keep their finger on the pulse with the kinds of questions that other students are struggling with, please be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you can stay in the loop. All right, tick boom.